Today is Earth Day, and thanks to Brian from Automate Your Life, I'm part of the Energy Challenge. Well, I'm not competing myself, but I'm making a contribution into how I am tackling the rising prices of gas and energy in my home. Stick around to see how technology is helping me save on my energy bills. Before I proceed with my video, let me just briefly give you info on what this energy challenge is. So, Brian from Automate Your Life, and I really do hope that you have already subscribed to him, has created a challenge where you would be able to track your energy usage and see if you have met your challenge. The idea is to try to lower our costs of energy. It can be electricity, gas, or any other type of energy you are using. And he has invited a lot of creators that are creating content for home automation and technology to be part of that energy challenge. If I'm not mistaken, overall number of subscribers among all the creators here is more than 2 million. Of course, majority is mine. But yeah, Brian also has some, so does Mr. Soki and others. If you want to see what Brian's challenge is, I'll be posting a link down in the description of the video. So let's talk about my challenge. One of the things I have been tackling for more than 7 years now is heating problem. And with current crisis, with the energy prices going up for both oil and gas, and since I'm heating on gas, this has become mandatory. So there are a couple of things that I have been doing for the last 6-7 years, but there are also some additional things that I will be doing from now on and into the future. Let's look at how I have been tackling my heating problem. Around 2015, I think, I bought my first smart thermostat, and it was a Tado smart thermostat. And ever since then, I have been building upon that ecosystem and improving on my heating capabilities. So, what are a couple of challenges for me that I'm trying to fix or solve with Tado? First of all, I want to have apartment always heated right to the exact temperature that we all need. And that is a temperature where I feel comfortable both in my living room, my bathroom, bedrooms, etc. The problem I was having is that my apartment unfortunately doesn't have well insulated walls. So because of that I added also smart valves. Smart valves allowed me to initiate heat in the room where the heat is necessary while also keeping the valves in other rooms closed so they do not overheat. And the integration with Home Assistant only added additional benefits such as tracking what's really going on with my heating system. So let's jump into Home Assistant. And this is my climate tab in Home Assistant. As you can see here, I track rooms, one, two, three, four rooms, but also the sensors in various other rooms that track both humidity and temperature. And humidity is part of the problem. Because if you have too of a high humidity in the winter, you would be feeling cold. So the idea is to keep the humidity balance, the air just about right, not even too dry or not too humid. But one thing that Tado allows me is to track call to heat. And what is call to heat? Call to heat is action by any smart valve or smart thermostat. It is requesting more heat because it is below the threshold that I've set up. If we look at the graphs, for example, dining room had zero call to heat today. Living room only had one and it requested only 9% of the heating power. This Luca room had more frequent calls to heat, but none of them was higher than 37%, while majority was around 10-12%. And the last one is the worst room in our apartment unfortunately due to the insulation of the walls that zeta room where we have more frequent requests call to heat and all are above 20 percent unfortunately here is one of the problems my current boiler gas boiler unfortunately doesn't support percentages below 100 percent meaning that if there is a call to heat it turns to state on and then gives any heat it can give out. If I set the temperature for the water inside the radiators to 50%, it will always heat water to 50%. And that is why this year I will be replacing my old 
gas boiler with the new one that talks across eBus. And with this additional communication, I presume my energy costs will be much lower than they are even today. That way, my smart thermostat, either smart valve or smart thermostat, when they make call to heat, they will be telling my boiler, okay, we need heat, but let's keep it under 20 or under 30%. And based on that, my boiler will know how much energy to put in, so it will not be overdoing or wasting the unnecessary energy. Instead, my boiler will create just enough energy, as requested by smart thermostat or smart valve, to heat up that specific room. And by the way, no, you do not have to use other systems. There are other systems that can support you and allow you to transition to better energy usage. But as I said, I'm already using Tado for seven years. For example, there is one other company that is creating a lot of smart products in the market. It's called Shelly, and they've just released the smart thermostatic radiator valves. And you can use these valves also combined with the application or home assistant to manage your energy use. So most of the things I'm telling you about Tado can be done with the various other systems. So how does Tado help me to lower my energy bill? For that, let's look at some of the reports that Tado is sending me each and every month. Each month, at the beginning of the new month, I receive a report on my energy usage, and I can see some rough numbers of the energy saved. For example, for March, it was around 17.7%. In March, it has detected that I have been 25 hours in away mode. And what is away mode? Away mode means that me and my family members were not at home, and the system would normally heat up the space if we were at home. So, it detected that we are not present, and instead of heating up the space, it conserved the energy. Also, it has detected that my windows have been opened 169 times. And yes, each of the smart thermostatic valves, or smart thermostat, detects the open window, and it knows to shut that room down for, I think, 10 minutes. That way you don't waste up the energy and heat the street. One additional thing that I love about Tado is weather adaptation. Yes, it knows where I live, it tracks the weather conditions for my area, and it knows that if, for example, I want room to be at 22 degrees centigrade, and it's currently 21 or 20.5 20 degrees inside, and it's predicted to be sunny, it knows it doesn't have to heat up the room anymore because the sun will do its thing and heat up the apartment instead of wasting the energy, either for gas or electricity. Also, it tracks the climate in the apartment, and climate is the information how the air quality inside the apartment was. Was it dry, was it humid, etc. It gives you even some information about the pattern and my usage compared to the usage of other Tada users in my area, and I can look at the statistics all the way to the 2017. By combining technologies, both in terms of hardware and software, such as the ones from Tado, or like this one from Shelly, you can improve your quality of life. Quality of life means that the temperature inside the apartment will always be like you want it to be. But on the other hand, the system itself will find ways to reduce the energy cost by bringing the intelligence inside the system. And yes, although I do not have air condition and the air condition will be installed in a couple of weeks, Tado allows you also to control this AC. And whatever you do with the gas heater, you can do with the AC, meaning that it can detect when you are approaching your house and start the AC. And of course, if you forget to turn it off, it will turn it off for you when you leave the apartment or your house. Sure, there are some things that I cannot change. I'm trying to educate also my family members that part of the energy cost or the gas cost is not just the heating, but also hot water, and that reduced shower times can also have a lower impact both on the energy bills, which are going unfortunately higher and higher each month, but also impact on the environment in terms of water saved, but also less energy used. So, what is your energy challenge for 2022? 
don't forget to check the hashtag energy challenge from other creators and of course Brian and see what's his energy challenge and how you can be part of that and track if you have been able or not to follow up your challenge and reduce your energy footprint for this year. I really would like to thank Brian for inviting me to be part of this energy challenge. I thank everybody who has watched this video and don't forget to subscribe to see how else I use technology to reduce the energy costs and improve quality of life. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.